Hi, I'm Marcus James Dixon with Gold Derby, and we are joined today by Robert Hertjevec from ABC Shark Tank. Uh, Robert, you just wrapped your 13th season as a shark. What yeah. is it that keeps you coming back to this tank year after year? The free food, the catering <laughs> on Shark Tank is incredible. Um, no, all joking aside, I think that uh, all of us are highly energized by being part of something that does so much good and is so inspirational to so many people. I think the thing that always amazes my friends is if you walk around with me, half the people that come up to me are little kids. And you know, by little, I mean like eight and nine. And they love the show. It's not just kids, it's adults. And you know, we're all old and crusty. And, and I think we get energized by people at that point of their life where we can make a difference for them. And Shark Tank, you don't just have the viewers as fans, you have the TV Academy, the Emmy Awards as fans. The show has won four Emmys now for Best Structured Reality Program. Um, but I do want to remind people the Sharks were not credited as producers back then. So you didn't actually get to take home a trophy, but now you are producers. So what would it mean if you won this year? You get to take that home and put it up on your mantle. Well, I, I already had one made anyway. That's how <laughs> optimistic I am. Um, you know, if, if I'm being completely sincere, as I always try to be, it kind of hurt our feelings. And, you know, we're not big awards people, but we are so invested in the show. You know, it's just a, six of us. We've been there for a long time. We spend a lot of time on the show. And it's a great show. We, we appreciate the Academy. I mean, you know, the Academy giving us the honor for the show, but we felt like in, in our own small way, we contributed to it. So we were really honored to be named as executive producers. And of course, the year after we were made executive producers, we didn't win. <laughs> so we're really excited about this year. Um, that had, same thing happened to John Hamm. Mad Men won four times for Best Drama Series, and he was not a producer. Then he was named a producer, and it stopped winning Best Drama Series. Is it? It's like a curse or something. Did he win after? Please tell me there's good to this story. He, the final season, he won for Best Actor. So he did get, he, oh. he took home an Emmy, yeah. Oh, well, I, what I got out of that is there's hope. There is hope, <laughs> yes. Um, you know, I went to a taping of Shark Tank a few years ago, and I was surprised to see one pitch went on for an entire hour. And of course, when it aired on TV, it was cut down to 15 minutes or so. Um, what would you say is the average length of a pitch? Was that just a longer than normal one or is that the average? Well, when you came, I think the average pitch at the time was actually longer is an hour and 15 minutes. Wow. And unbelievably, no matter how long or short, it actually gets edited into seven or eight minutes. Wow. So what you see at home is very short. The average pitch has gone down to about 47 minutes because we've been trained better. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the producers do a better job of training the sharks as we, as we get older, but it, it just takes time. You know, people still don't realize that the show is very real. We know nothing about people when those doors open. So it takes, you know, it takes some time to figure out who they are, what their business is, because we have no background information. And of the six regular sharks, who in real life would you say is the least like what we see on television? Oh, that's a, no one's ever asked me that. Wow, in 14 years, no one's ever asked me that question. <laughs> I got, I have, the, I'm gonna give credit to Chris Beecham, our managing editor. He, he gave this question to me. Wow, well, seriously, because normally it's the opposite question. Hey, who is the most like you see on TV? Um, Mark. Mark is a super nice human being. Um, and that doesn't always come across on TV. Although I think it does in snippets. But I think, you know, I think for all of us, whenever I've had a personal issue, I've had some bad stuff in my life, Mark's the first guy that reaches out. And I... I don't think that always comes through. The guy's just a super nice human being. Mm. Um, in, in your eyes, what makes the perfect pitch? What would make you stand up and applaud that entrepreneur? 
funny, we have a lot of downtime. So we talk about this all the time, right? Because we're like, oh, what'd you think of that pitch? And I think over 14 seasons, what we figured out, and I think we would all agree on this is before you sell me your idea or your business, you got to sell me yourself. So I think the perfect pitch is when the person, the personality, and the theater of your pitch matches the reality of what you're pitching. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's 50% of it. The other 50% is you actually need to have a good business and you need to know your numbers mm -hmm. and all of that kind of stuff. So it's never one thing, but um, being a good human being and smiling really helps. Um, you once said in an interview that uh, entrepreneurship is the great equalizer. Um, I thought that was so fascinating. Could you expand on that idea? Yeah, when I started out in business, um, I didn't know anything about business. My dad was a blue collar guy, swept floors in the factory. My mom was a receptionist. And everybody who had business sense said to me, the key to getting ahead in business is not what you know, it's who you know. And in order to make money, you got to have money. And I didn't have any money. You know, I'm, my parents didn't know anybody. And what I found very quickly in entrepreneurship, when you start your own business, nobody cares. Nobody cares what your dad did. Nobody cares where you came from. Um, it's all about the value that you add. I never went on a customer call to try to add value to a customer. And the customer said, hang on a second. Where's your MBA from? It was always about what value can you provide me? Entrepreneurship, if you can add value and you can start a business, nobody cares. The world is your oyster. Hmm. Uh, you had some great guest sharks this year, including Peter Jones, your old buddy from Dragon's Den, and yeah. superstar Kevin Hart. Um, who's a dream guest shark you would love to sit next to in the future? It's funny. Peter Jones was the only guest shark we've ever had who was actually taller than Mark. So, uh, and Kevin was great. Um, you know, for me, Roger Penske is an amazing human being. He's built an amazing business. I think an amazing guest shark would be Donald Trump. But mm. of course, we all couldn't get a word in edgewise if Donald Trump was on the show. So that would never work. It would probably be your biggest ratings ever, 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 <laughs> ever. <laughs> um, Shark Tank is such a, a success that, of course, you're going to have companies pretending to be Shark Tank products and they've never been on the show. Um, what advice do you have for potential consumers out there? I know there's a PSA that runs occasionally within the episode now. Yeah, thanks for mentioning that. It's one of the big frustrations. And, you know, we're always promoting a uh, hair loss, um, keto diet thing. And we never do. None of us ever promote stuff like that. And I know people always at home think, well, how can you not control that? But, you know, the internet is a big open, it's the wild frontier. It's very difficult to control that. So we just encourage people to be careful. We, we tend to promote stuff that we believe in. I mean, we all make mistakes sometimes when we don't know the product and we get involved, but uh, we try to be highly credible. Uh, can you remind folks about some of your most successful Shark Tank investments of all time? I'm, I'm thinking of Tipsy Elves. I remember watching that episode and the other sharks thought it was a joke, this ugly sweater company, but you saw the potential and now it's a huge business. And what are some uh, others? I thought it was a joke too, if I'm being honest, because <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going through this phase because I own a uh, large cybersecurity company. It's very, my day is very serious dealing with governments, large corporations, people who've been hacked, um, state sponsored cyber terrorism. Like that's my typical day. And I'm on the show and I think it's season two. And I'm like, these people are coming up with socks and all kinds of other things. And I'm thinking, what am I doing here? And then the tipsy elf guys come out, inappropriate, ugly Christmas sweaters. I'm just shaking my head and I'm like, oh, what the heck, I'll try it. And I tried it and it turned out to be one of my best investments. They were great. And what I've learned from that is 
I don't invest in stuff anymore that I necessarily have a proprietary knowledge in, mm. like technology. I invest in products that touch the consumer. The beauty of Shark Tank is we're a huge consumer brand. And if you can reach through that television screen and become a hit with the audience, you're going to take off. And so that's what Tip Sales has done. There's another product on a similar vein, SandCloud, just a few years ago came out and they sell uh, Turkish beach towels, which sounds really simple, but they're beautiful. And the mission is so pure about giving back to the oceans and saving turtles that consumers have really embraced them. They came on the show, they were doing, I think, 200,000 and we'll do 75 million this year. Wow. Yeah, it's amazing. I love it. I love hearing those stories. Um, I have to say, you do seem like the most fun shark on the panel. You're always volunteering to get up out of your seat and go try out the product. And this year you went into the cold water immersion tub, which <laughs> I'm never doing that. I applaud you for doing that. Um, are, are you the most fun? That's how it comes across on TV. Well, uh I, I appreciate you calling me the most fun. My wife would say I'm the largest child on that show. <laughs> um, but either one, it's all about fun. Yeah, I, I have a hard time sitting still. I tend to be a pretty active guy. And so I like to play. I like to do things. I like to uh, have fun. And I'm genuinely interested. I, I have an, a natural curiosity about business and life and I just want to try everything. And some of your fellow sharks, uh, most notably Mr. Wonderful, they're always making royalty deals, but you don't really go that route. It, what is it about royalty deals that you don't like making those offers? I've Kevin, after knowing him for 20 years, has, has churned me on a royalty deal. Um, Naturally, I'm, I'm an operator. I like to invest in companies. I think that the beauty of entrepreneurship and investment in our show is when I take a stake in the business, we're married at the hip. If you do well, I do well, and I want to support the growth of the business. Royalty is almost like a commission. It, it, to me, it feels almost like a commission check. Absolutely, there's a place for it, just not typically what most of the other sharks like to do. And a final question, Robert, can you tell us something that viewers may not know about Shark Tank that would surprise them? Every contestant that comes out, once they leave, has to sit down with a psychologist. Mm -hmm. um, believe it or not, all joking aside, it's extremely stressful being on the show. We had 225,000 people apply for the show last year. And out of 225,000, we brought 150 to LA. So forget even airing, like imagine the pressure you're under and they tell you that. And I think what we figured out early on in the seasons, we want to make sure that we're doing good for all people. And, you know, everybody takes pressure differently. And so we don't do it for any other reason than to help people and make sure that, you know, we didn't damage somebody or something didn't go the wrong way, and that everybody, whether they get a deal or not, comes out with a positive experience. Well, thank you so much for chatting with us today. I know you're a very busy man. Um, and Emmy voters, uh, best of luck, Robert, and the rest of the show. Thank sharks. you. Yeah, we love the show. Thank you. Thank you.